Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixim Perfect, and there are lots of ways and approaches to creating the dual lighting effect in Photoshop and tons of great videos on YouTube as well by some awesome creators. So be sure to check them out as well and support the community. Today I'm going to share with you my personal take by sharing one simple trick to create the dual lighting effect with just two layers. Besides, we will also learn how to add some light elements to make it look interesting. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop, and if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, I don't even have to say it anymore. Check the links in the description. Before we start any project in Photoshop, it will help if you start with the end in mind. What do we mean by that? If you can visualize what the end result would look like, it will take you there easily. So in this image, if we look at it closely, I want a cyan light from the left hand side and a red light from the right hand side. And if you look closely, even more closely, you can see there's already some lights from the right and there's already lights from the left. And we can utilize that, we just have to color it. So how do we color the lights? How do we map the colors to highlights, midtones and shadows? Try to remember it, gradient maps, right? So first of all, for the cyan light, we just have to color the light. Let's create a gradient map by clicking on the adjustment layer icon and then simply choose gradient map. Look at this gradient, it goes from black to white. Similarly in this image, from shadows to the highlights, the gradients are from black to white. We can change it to whatever we want. We want the cyan color, right? So single click on it, the gradient editor is going to show up. So the right hand side, we want to change it to cyan. Single click on it and then click on the color and choose whatever color you want. I'm going to choose a shade of cyan, the brightest one that we can find. All right, this looks pretty good, doesn't it? Hit OK once you're satisfied and keep the left to black. You can single click on it single click on the color and make sure it is black if it's not already black. All right, hit OK. Now the cyan has been colored. Pretty easy, right? Now we need to worry about the red color. So click on the adjustment layer icon and then again choose gradient map. And this time we want the red color. So single click on the gradient. On the right hand side we want the red and similarly on the left hand side we want black. So bring the black to the left hand side. Let's take the white momentarily to the right. And we're going to change the white to red. So single click on it, single click on the color and let's choose red. Now keep in mind, we are choosing the brightest color. We are going from the brightest color to black so that the extreme highlight areas are painted with the brightest color. Hit OK once you're satisfied with this color. If you want to increase the saturation or change the color anytime, you can again open up the colors and increase the saturation to your liking. Hit OK, hit OK again. And let's collapse this. Now we only wanted the reds on the right hand side. And how do we limit a layer to a particular area? Masks, right? So simply select the mask and then press Ctrl or Command I to invert the mask. Now all of the mask is painted in black. So whatever area we're going to paint in white, those areas are the only areas that are going to show up. So take the brush with white as the foreground color. You can decrease the flow if you want to. So I'm going to go ahead and change the flow to about 20%. All right, zoom in and start painting on the right hand side. Only paint over the areas where the light is coming from the right hand side. We should not just blindly paint like this. Only paint over the areas where the lights are there. Don't worry about the light leaking. We're going to take care of that later. We have decreased the flow so that we can merge the colors well. All right, so you can increase it to your liking. Now, if you have painted in excess, you can always change the foreground color to black by pressing X. This toggles the foreground and the background color. Now it's black. So you can paint away the excessive areas. Make sense? Now this looks pretty all right. However, we have a problem. If you zoom in, look at the red color, it's leaking into the background. If the background was 100% black, this should not have been a problem. But since this is not, it's a little bit faded. We need to apply a little bit blend if to cure that. And it's going to be pretty easy. All you have to do is to double click on the right hand side of the layer and then take the slider of the underlying layer from left to right. We are taking this effect away from the dark areas of the underlying layer. In other words, we are taking this red effect away from the dark areas of any layer that's under it. Therefore, it is called underlying layer. All right. So let's take it to the right. 
See, all of it is away, but it's so harsh, right? Have a look, it's very harsh. So we need to soften it a little bit. So hold the Alt key or the Option key. Click the slider to break it apart. Take one half all the way to the left. Take the other half to the right slowly and gradually. This seems to be about right. Hit OK once you're satisfied. Let's zoom out and have a look. Looks pretty good. Now there still are some leaks here and there, but after we add the light element, it's not going to be visible as much. You can take your time to mask it out if you want, but we don't have to really do that. So that's how to add the dual lighting effect with just two layers, both of them gradient maps. Here's the before and here is the after. Now I did promise you that I would show you how to add the lighting elements, light elements or some fun stuff here and there. All right, so I have this light painting overlay right in here. So I'm just going to drag it and drop it over the canvas. All right. Now you can rotate it, modify it in whatever way you want. You can also download a lot of these in the internet or you can just license stock. But I'm going to make it a little bigger and I'm, we're going to just stretch it a little bit. All right, let's stretch it. Something like this. How do you feel about this? Let's make it a little larger. Bring it right there. Hit enter or return. We're going to adjust this later. Change the blend mode from normal to guess what? Screen because we want to brighten it. We want to make this act like a light and we want to make the black areas vanish and screen as the blend mode, which does that. Now press control or command T. Let's make it a little larger. Okay. That looks good. Hit enter or return once you're satisfied with the position. Now we want to make the circle look like as if it is going around the subject. And the way to do that is simply erasing certain areas like this. Because if it was going around the subject, these areas won't be visible, right? So first of all, let's click on the mask button to create a mask. We'll just paint in black on those areas. And to make it simple, let's make a selection of the subject. So first of all, let's just turn off everything. This is just to make things cleaner. Select the background layer or the subject layer. Select the quick selection tool or the object selection tool or any of that. Even the magic wand tool will do. Once you select one of those tools at the top, you will see select subject. So click on that Photoshop will automatically make a selection of the subject. You can use any of your favorite selection tools if you want to. This is a rough selection. Now let's turn on everything. All right, let's go to the mask right there and then simply take the brush with black as the foreground color. Just paint right here with the selection still active. Simple, isn't it? You're going to paint here at the top as well. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? All right, I love it. Now press Ctrl or Command D to deselect that. Now you can zoom in and clean it up as much as you want to. All right, looks pretty good. Now we need to match the color of the light element. As you can see, it's just one color. We want to match it to the existing colors of the subject. And we already have those gradient maps and we can also apply those gradient maps to these. All right, so for the cyan, this one was the cyan gradient map. We can actually name this cyan. All right. Now let's make a copy by just pressing Ctrl or Command J and take it up. We only want to apply the cyan copy to this light element. So hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the line between these two layers. This creates a clipping mask and limits the cyan copy just to the light element. Here's the before, here is the after. Now we only want it on the left hand side. So select the mask and then choose a gradient. From white to black is fine and we're going to make a gradient just like that. So that way it's only affecting the left hand side. You can experiment by creating gradients of different lengths and see what works best for you. Now let's paint the right hand side with red. Now we already have the gradient map for the red. We can actually make a copy of that by pressing Ctrl or Command J. And before we make a copy, let's name it red just to make it clear. Press Ctrl or Command J and take it to the top. We also want to limit it to the light element. So hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the line between these two layers. Also, we want to clean up the blend if that we did. So right click on it and choose clear layer style that will be cleared. And the next thing we want to do is to just replace the mask with this one, right? We want the opposite of that mask. So hold the Alt key or the Option key, click, drag and drop right there. Replace layer mask. Yes, but we just want the opposite of that. So with the mask selected, press Ctrl or Command I. I stands for invert. Now the right hand side is painted with red, but it's too dark. We need to brighten it a little bit. Guess what tool we're going to use? One of my favorite tools always. You already have guessed it. Curves. So click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. Also in here, we want the same mask. So hold the Alt key or the Option key. Click and drag and drop right there. Do you want to replace it? Of course, yes. And we also want to limit it to just the element. So hold the Alt key or the Option key and then click on the line between these two layers. All right. And then open up the curves properties and just brighten it. It's as simple as that. Or you can take the right slider to the left. 
we don't want to brighten it so much that it begins to lose the details. So about this point is fine. You can also make it even brighter if you wish to, but this seems to be a right amount. Now you can go to the red properties and then change the color a little bit, maybe increase the saturation a little more to make it interesting. Hit okay once you're satisfied, hit okay again. And there you go, my friend. Doesn't that look interesting? So here is the before and here is the after. Look at the coloring. It's amazing. So that's how to create the dual lighting effect in Photoshop with just two layers, both of them gradient. And if you want to add additional light elements, you can easily do so. You can get some overlays from the internet and just simply place it. Let's do a quick little recap. First of all, we had this image to start with. Then we applied a gradient map with cyan to black for the left hand side. Then we applied another gradient map from red to black and we only applied it with the mask on the right hand side. We also used blend if to take it away from the dark areas and that's pretty much it. And after that we added a light element, changed the blend mode to screen. We colored the left hand side with cyan, the same gradient map which we had used before. We colored the right hand side with red with the help of another gradient map. And then we brightened the right hand side just a little bit. And that was pretty much it, my friend. I hope this video helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks, or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pix and Perfect free for everybody forever. Thanks so much for all your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys again in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.